On today's Toolbox, we're going to dig deeper into XAML Islands and we'll see what treasure we can find. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Adam Braden. Hey, Adam. Hello, Robert. Welcome back on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We did a two-parter on modernizing uh, existing Windows desktop apps. Um, and in the second part, which aired last week, we talked about XAML Islands a little bit briefly. Um, and today we decided that, that you could come back and do a bit more of a deep dive into XAML Islands to get a little bit more into some of the use cases and, and show how it works. We, we kind of felt like we kind of skimmed over it a little bit last episode. So let's dive into it a little more. Yeah, um, in the previous episode I showed, uh, you know, some of the um, easy drag and drop experiences provided by the Windows Community Toolkit, mm -hmm. which provides wrapper controls for the media player and uh, web view and ink canvas and things like that. Um, and I hinted at using the XAML host control to load any, or I did show um, using the XAML host control to show, load any kind of control dynamically. Right. Uh, what I didn't really get into showing was actually building a UWP user control to get that full dynamic UWP XAML experience and how to load that into your uh, WinForms and WPF yeah, applications. Cause, cause the idea is that as you're building a UWP app, there's a bunch of XAML that you have, mm -hmm. right, that takes care of the UI. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it's pretty simple to use a control from UWP in a WPF app, but what if you have a bunch of XAML that mm -hmm. you basically want to reuse? Mm -hmm. so. As well as um, maybe you want to do some more in-depth XAML mm -hmm. uh, fluent design, like the transparency, yep. the animations, that sort of thing. And so what I wanted to do today was actually show you both how to do the hard way through the XAML host control and all your WPF code, and you'd have to like code all that up yourself, okay. as well as doing it an easier way um, by building a UWP control. Okay, cool. Okay. And we should mention that you're using the soon to be here Visual Studio 2019 for this demo. Correct. Okay, which at this point is soon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a launch event April 2nd, I believe it is. Yes. Um, and so, all right. Just a, just a level set. Cool. Um, so what I have here on my desktop right now is the XAML controls gallery. I showed a little bit of this in our previous episode mm -hmm. and uh, just wanted to highlight some things that I'll be showing. Um, one of the examples is the anima animation interop. With animation, oftentimes it draws the user's focus to an activity or, or something you want them to accomplish whether it's a transition from one flow to another on the form, um, or really drive uh, uh, the importance of something by exploding it in view and then dropping it back down. Mm -hmm. And so the example here uh, in the controls gallery is just a simple blow up of a button. Uh, I'll show you how we can do that as well. There's a little bit of code to create this spring animation effect is okay. what it's called. Uh, there's another one uh, further low or further down on here where we've got connected animations between multiple controls, mm, okay. right? And you can spring all of them together. And what I've essentially done is taken uh, the code from this sample and poured it into a WPF application using the XAML host. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing um, with my application here, this is just a simple WPF app. And if I go to the designer, you'll see I've got a couple of WPF uh, buttons and text boxes, okay. as well as this wonderful XAML host, uh, Windows XAML host. Okay. And what I've done here and is I set the- And then just refresh uh, our memory. How do you get that? Oh, uh, yes. Data reference or do something, a NuGet package? Generally, you'll manage your NuGet packages. And if you um, add a reference to the uh, Microsoft, uh, you, uh, toolkit here, the Microsoft okay. Toolkit WPF. Got it. And that'll give you that XAML host where you can load any content into the form. Okay. Uh, I also have a reference to uh, uh, WinUI uh, and the SDK contracts. Okay. So you can program against um, the Windows APIs. This example, we're not focusing on those parts as much. Right. 
But one of the main things, or the, the primary thing with using the XAML host is you set the initial type name of the control. And you set that to the UWP type that you want to load. Okay. So I'm going to host a stack panel. Uh, and then with it in code, I can dynamically load a whole bunch of controls into that stack panel. Ah, okay. Right? Uh, and once the XAML host is ready for you to start manipulating those controls, it fires the child changed event. So if I go back to my control or my code, um, you'll see here at the top that I've declared a number of controls, UWP based controls, mm -hmm. that I'll be uh, manipulating in my code. And down here in the child changed event is where I start initializing those controls. Um, First thing I typically do is get uh, the sender tells me which uh, for the, the host control, and then I'll get the child, which is the stack panel. Okay. Then um, uh, I'm doing a cool effect here, the acrylic brush. Are you familiar with acrylic in the background? No. Oh, well, let me switch back to the controls gallery real quick, and we'll show you a quick example of that. So acrylic is that transparency effect. Uh, a little hard to see on the board here. Um, but you can see as I move around it, you can see some transparency of both the background of my desktop mm -hmm. uh, and the th or thing, different things behind it. Okay. And I've uh, amped up the transparency um, to, uh, to be able to show that a little bit better here. So I'm going to apply this background to the, everything in the stack panel. And so ideally, everything in that uh, XAML, uh, Windows XAML host should have a kind of a transparent or acry acrylic feel. Mm -hmm. The next thing I'm doing here is I'm building up the additional controls. This is kind of the, the hard or the legwork of initializing all of them. Um, I have a couple of text boxes, and then I have a couple of buttons. Okay. Um, the buttons I initialize to various sizes and hook up those spring, spring animations to them. And lastly, I just add them to the stack panel and um, go. So we can take a look at that code, uh, but first let's take a look and run and see what happens. Oh. And so, so the, whoop. the test and the WPF text and the main window is obviously all WPF. Yep. And then inside that are is UWP controls. Correct. And cool. you, can kind of, you can see it uh, on the big screen here too, but as I move around, the transparency mm -hmm. effect has applied to the entire XAML host right. and even the buttons there. Nice. You can okay. see I get the animation effect on mm -hmm. these buttons as well, driving my focus and my interaction to those. I also wanted to highlight a couple of things about the UWP intrinsic controls that we've made improvements to compared to the WPF, and you may want to actually pull those into your applications as needed. One example is uh, the infamous typos, right? Oh, I got caps lock on. But if I do, right, mm -hmm. I have a misspelling here in the word spell check. Um, WPF doesn't help me do anything like that. Right. Another example is emojis. I just saw today that we're on emoji 12. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, did I miss one through 11? <laughs> I'm not really sure what that means. I think I but missed a few in the way, the way there too. But Windows 10 has a great uh, built-in support for emojis. Right. Some of that does fall through with UTF-8 UTF support for mm -hmm. the WPF text box. Um, but one thing you'll notice here, WPF, it's only black and white. Right. All right. Now, I created a uh, text box down here um, in the XAML island with the UWP control. Ooh. And look, you get squiggles mm -hmm. with words. So it, it has a dictionary. Nice. And if I right click, I get a whole um, intrinsic. Is it the same help dictionary that Word uses, by the way? Is there a uh, single dictionary, do you know? There's a dictionary that's supported by XAML. I'll have to double check okay. and follow up where, where it hooks into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you can fix that up. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you spell, if it knows some words, it'll actually autocorrect for them. So right. I misspelled goodbye, and it autocorrected to goodbye. Cool. And the last kind of cool little tidbit I'll show you is emojis, and you have Very color nice. support inside the emoji. Very nice. So. 
And um, you eventually get support for Emoji 12. Emoji whatever 12. that comes I out. I don't know what number WPF <laughs> supports, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's not 12. Yeah. <laughs> so this was an example of um, just showing you that, yeah, I can create more complex controls, mm -hmm. build them up in my WPF uh, code, and um, essentially take all that code that's in the XAML's control gallery or you know, out there on the web for UWP, and I can code against it in my WPF right. app. So, cool. Um, let me go ahead and close this or finish that. And yeah, taking a look at the initialized an animations, that's the same exact code that was mm -hmm. in the uh, XAML controls gallery. Okay. But this is really not the way we encourage so, you. So to let me do ask a, a question: Is this, is this, a, are you using a XAML island? Because I haven't seen any XAML yet, necessarily. <laughs> I've seen you do code. Yeah. Um, well, in WPF, in the designer, you can't mix UWP XAML and WPF XAML. You can't okay. copy and paste. Right. It just won't parse. Okay. Right. You could if you had. UWP XAML in a file or some other, or even copy paste it into code, mm -hmm. you could use UWP XAML parser. Okay. And then you could load that content into this control. But you are, you are using a XAM XAML island is the technology that enables you to use uh, the controls from UWP inside a WPF app? Correct. Okay, because they are both XAML based, even though you can, of course, create controls in code. Right. So I just wanted to, to make sure that part was clear. Yeah. yeah so you XAML Island is the underlying yeah. technology that lets you do that. It's the host. It's right. It's the okay. interop layer between yep. an HWIND and the UWP core window Got it. hosting yep. technology. Okay. Um, yeah, like it, those con UWP controls I created in code, I could not assign those to the WPF window element. That would fail. Okay. Right? I've got right. to assign them to the XAML uh, host control. Right. Okay. But as you noticed, I had to write a whole bunch of code to initialize just my UI, and mm -hmm. that's not a very uh, WPF or XAML y thing to do. Um, and so, what I want to show you next is the approach we're working. Um, the approach that we want you to developers to be able to use going forward and how to mix more complex XAML UI with their existing applications. Right. And so in my second example here, I got the uh, user control that I've built inside of uh, UWP. Mm, okay. Right? Yep. And I've got, um, I can view the XAML there as well. And so here I can do all the rich XAML copy and paste and build a user control just like that. Right. Uh, and I can build an object model so that um, people can code against this user control, of course. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I do in my WPF app is now I can go through and in my XAML host control, I can set the initial type name to that user control. Cool. So it's uh, pretty straightforward once you build that. There are a couple of things you need to do in order to hook it up into the project system. Let me show you uh, the project system right now. Ideally, I've got, uh, I've got this item group commented out right now. Ideally, we want a project reference to just work. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of bugs we're still working through okay. with .NET Core 3 and the okay. project system. Uh, so you have to directly reference the output of the DLL today. Okay. And then to get XAML to work, you also have to out reference the XBF file. Um, but that's some temporary hacks. By the time we uh, get to release Debt Core 3, uh, we'll have worked through these solutions. Yep. Okay, cool. So that's some <coughs> tweaks to do the project. Um, you'll don't notice I am actually using a Net Core 3 project here. Yep. Okay. Um, and the Does reason. Does it have to be? Um, it all, the question, the answer is it depends. Okay. So if you remember last time, I mentioned that with XAML Islands, there's some challenges mixing different types of net core okay. or .NET. You right. can't mix .NET framework to consume a .NET core uh, component. Mm -hmm. And so um, a managed .NET core component. So if I was writing a native control, a C++ UWP control, then yes, I could use it easily in dot my not .NET framework apps or my .NET core apps. If I'm writing a managed UWP control, 
those will only work in .NET Core apps. Oh. So you have an existing WPF app written full-blown framework. In C Sharp, yep. C Sharp. You have a UWP app written to the version of .NET that is part of UWP. UWP. You, you're saying that you can't create that user control and use it in the WPF app unless the WPF app is migrated to .NET Core 3? Let me clarify. Okay. The UWP control, if it is written in C Sharp, um, can only work on .NET Core 3 applications. Okay. If the UWP control is written in C++, okay. native, it can work in .NET Framework and Got .NET Core apps. Okay, okay. So if you are That's building a lot know. of components that you want to reuse in these scenarios, mm -hmm. you'll probably want to use C++ uh, if your customers are Let's .NET Framework. Assuming you know C++. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all of Windows UI mm -hmm. um, is written in C++. Sure. And so uh, we are working to make sure there's some gaps okay. to close in the end-to-end -end story, but we want Windows UI to be usable through XAML islands in .NET Framework apps and .NET Core apps. Okay. Um, but a lot of efforts being put into .NET Core and carrying things forward, and mm -hmm. so for right now, we've, we're focusing UWP to interop with .NET Core. Okay. Good to know. So, so that's what I have here is a .NET Core 3 application uh, along with the um, managed uh, WinRT user control. Mm -hmm. The uh, other thing I have to mention here is the manifest file. Right now I'm an unpackaged application and XAML Islands has a, a check in it that says I can only work on certain builds of Windows. And the way you uh, tell that in an unpackaged application is that the max version tested in the app manifest. Okay. If I took this out, I would get an error. I could uh, comment that out and we could save and we'll see what kind of error we get at runtime. I have to let it rebuild here for a second. But uh, XAML Islands usually pops up a dialog that says, yeah. Hmm. I okay. need version 18.226 or higher. Got it. All right. So let's stop and go back to our manifest. Uncomment out that code, save, and rerun it. Oh, maybe I need to rebuild all. What did you specify? Uh, I think there's something cached. Okay. But the version I specified is 2.9.5. Okay. And then, of course, if you, if somebody tries to run this app on a version less than that, they'll get an error. Yeah, the app manifest will fail, uh, okay. fail to load right. or so force it to not to load. You probably put a check in your code to check before you get that far, like on the startup of the app or something? Well, this is in the app manifest, so the okay. OS will actually oh, typically okay. fail it to load. Okay. Got right? It. All right. And so it's a similar application. Um, you can see that I added a, the acrylic effect with mm -hmm. the XAML islands, kind of going dark and light with depending on the background there as well. Yeah. And uh, I've got, in this example, I just had a pop-up menu um, for a fly out here, and I've got this similar, the, the text box here. And apparently, we need to put spell checking on button text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, very good. Good catch. <laughs> um, cool. And so, yeah. So, what I've shown you there is uh, the hard way of adding a whole bunch of content right. to your existing WPF applications, mm -hmm. or a simpler way by building a UWP control. Yeah, I think and that then adding that to your form. Yeah, that that seems the the right place, a good place to start. You've built some UI in a UWP app that you want to be able to reuse mm -hmm. um, in your WPF app. 
it could be login screen, it could be a particular functionality because you have multiple versions of the app. Mm -hmm. And you just want to be able to have that UI in the WPF app. Mm -hmm. So you just create a user control out of it and use it. And then you need to be a little bit careful about using some of these animation effects because it's going to be in parts of the app but not others. You don't want to have a form yeah, yeah. where the buttons on the top don't do anything but the buttons on the bottom do. The bottom half of the form has the, the, uh, the visual effect but the top half doesn't. So there's some design carefulness you need to, yeah. uh, to do to not make There's the obviously some reusable components as you architect yeah. your app yep. and you can pick and choose which ones to replace mm -hmm. and get some more uh, you know, f depth to your application, more interaction, more focus right. uh, to the flows of the app. Um, maybe replace the, for simpler forms, replace the whole UI uh, yeah. uh, with the you user might control. You might ultimately decide <laughs> that you just want the whole UI to be rewritten as a UWP and then just reuse the code, right? Yeah. I mean, get to the point where that's asked of you or demanded of you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, I did have one more surprise for you. If Sweet, you want. I love surprises. <laughs> Last time, uh, actually, in the first uh, toolbox session, mm -hmm. we had ported an app to um, .NET Core, and then I was showing you the packaging project work with yes. .NET Core. But when I hit F five, it failed to build, right? And I wasn't able to truly show it actually running as a, a .NET Core app running as a package. Okay, uh, I've built that here in this solution. Uh, fixed the problem. It was actually a UX issue, and I misinterpreted the error message, oh, and so okay. we just kind of skipped past it. Um, but I, I've got it up and running All now. Right, let's see it. Um, what we've done here in the code now is we'll add notes. Uh, uh, should I add a note to that first episode that lets people know to sure. watch this episode, or yeah, is yeah. that like breaking into jail and highlighting the fact that that we messed up? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. <laughs> we'll see if they notice, and then we can point them that like it does work here. But Users the goal have noticed mistakes. Uh, viewers have noticed mistakes before, so yes. we'll give them credit. Um, but what I've done here is just simply add a packaging project to this solution. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, there's the application node. It points to my WPF uh, Core 3 application. And so if I set this as my startup, uh, it's going to have to rebuild that application, and then it's going to package that application, mm -hmm. and then it's going to deploy that application to the Windows, and then it's going to launch and debug that application. Right. So this pipeline takes a second. Yep. Uh, but cross your fingers if I have set up everything correctly, we will get an application launched. Oh, there it is. Magic. All right. Yay. And so you can see from the icon down below that mm -hmm. I've, uh, it's packaged this time because I right. don't have the right visual assets hooked up. Cool, cool, cool. But um, we have a .NET Core 3 application with XAML Islands running in a package. Nice. So very, I could submit nice. this to the store or yep. uh, pass around the MSIX package for side loading in my enterprise or whatnot. Fantastic. All right, cool. Okay. Cool, cool stuff. All right. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this part three of our two-parter <laughs> on <laughs> modernizing your existing desktop apps. Uh, any questions, you know where to reach us, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.